on uh, we turn to page 8a we're, uh, we're on page 8a um, let's just uh, talk a little about what we did what we learned yesterday so we've been uh, dealing with the difference between the Chagiga of the 14th day of Nisan and the Chagiga of the 15th day of Nisan the Gemara was dealing with that and the reason the Gemara was dealing with that was because there was something surprising that the uh, Mishnah in the Brisa uh, had said that the specifically the Chagiga uh, of Yom Tov Arisha and Shal Pesach um, that specifically that Chagiga could be brought from Meister. And what was that excluding why are we specifically talking about the chagiga the holiday sacrifice the peace offering sacrifice that's for the holiday it's called the chagiga offering that sacrifice can be brought according to base hillel from miser and uh the mishnah does not say that that applies to the holiday of shavuos or the holiday of sukkah it only says it regarding pesach so the Mara sees that as emphasizing that there must be something that we're excluding if we're specifically saying the Pesach one, it can be brought from my... So the Gemara initially understood that to, 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 to mean that um, the initial understanding was why is that, that maybe it's saying that the that the uh, the other holidays cannot be brought. The other sac holiday sacrifice, Chagiga, cannot be brought from Meister. And why would that be? That's the initial thought. Then the Gemara says, well, what it means is to exclude the 14th day Chagiga versus the 15th day Chagiga. And this is all on the bottom of 7b, where it mentions this, that Ravashi wants to say that the reason why it, specifies the 15th day Chagiga is because the 15th day Chagiga can be brought partially from Meiser, but the um, the 14th day Chagiga can even be brought completely from, um, can even be brought completely from uh, Meiser, right? So that was the difference between the two. The, the, the 15th day Chagiga, um needs to be brought uh, at least partially from unconsecrated and partially from Meiser, but the, the 14th day can be completely from Meiser. Now, in other words, you can use your Meiser Shani money for the Chagiga of the 14th day of Nisa. And we explained that. And the reason why that is, is because the 14th day Chagiga is not so much of an obligation. It's more of a, uh, 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 it's more of a solution that if you bring a sacrifice called the Chagiga, on the 14th day of Nisan, you will be satisfied enough so that when you eat your Paschal offering, it will be the completion of your satiation. But uh, it's, not, it's not exactly an obligation. Now, where else do we see that the Chagiga of the 14th day is not so much of an obligation? Where do we really see that? Well, there's three conditions that you need to have in order to bring the 14th day sacrifice called the Chagigo. What are the three conditions? So one of the conditions is that you only bring the Chagigo if you have a small Paschal offering. If you have a big Paschal offering, if you have a big carbon Pesach, then you don't bring the Chagigo. Why not? Because you don't want to leave over the Paschal offering meat and end up causing it to be a leftover a sacrifice that's not eaten, that's not allowed. It's called nicer, the pro, 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 prohibition of leaving it over. So you really want to, you know, consume the entire Paschal offering. 
Now, if you have a very large crowd, then uh, you know your 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 uh, Paschal offering, even though it might look big, but not necessarily is it that big. You still might need a chagiga because the chagiga uh, will supply you with at least the initial satisfaction, satiation of, of your uh, hunger. And uh, the Paschal offering, being that you have a large crowd then maybe you would, you know, you would bring, you would have the Chagiga first and you could have the Paschal. But if you have a small crowd and you have a big animal, then th that would be an exception to the rule. You do not bring a Chagiga. Another exception to the rule is if it's Shabbos. If it's Shabbos, if it falls on Shabbos, the 14th day of Nisan, they would not bring this Chagiga offering. And a, an additional exception to the rule would be, and, and of course that's obvious because again, the Chagiga doesn't carry with it this obligation to bring it now. It's um, it's more of a solution. Now, bringing such a sacrifice on Shabbos is prohibited, obviously. You're not allowed to bring a sacrifice on, on Shabbos unless it's a commandment. Uh, the, of course, the, the, the Musaf offerings, the daily offering, fine. But the other, any extra sacrifice you don't bring, you're not allowed to bring on Shabbos. Yantav, you could. Uh, depend. I mean, actually, I shouldn't say that. Yom Tov depends on the, on, the, on the obligation, but for Shabbos, for sure not. And the other, um, and the other uh, uh, condition that you need to meet in order to be able to bring the Chagiga of the 14th day of Nisan, the day before Pesach, is that people have They have to be pure. If people are not pure, then you would not be able to bring that Chagiga, even though the Paschal offering has an exemption that even if the people are, are impure, there is an exemption, depending on the, the situation, there is an exemption that Tumah Hutra but uh, the Chagiga would not be Hutra the Chagiga wouldn't, and uh, therefore you would not bring the Chagiga uh, if, the, if people are impure. Okay, so bottom line is that the... Uh, the bottom line is that the Gemara here says that there's a difference between the 14th day sacrifice and the 15th day sacrifice of Pesach. So what it helps us, knowing this, helps us understand why the Mishnah mentioned the 15th day of Pesach. In other words, the 15th day of Nisan. So why? Why does the Mishnah say that the 15th day of Nisan, Yom Tev Arishan Shal Pesach, the first day of Pesach, which is the 15th of Nisan, the Mishnah specifically says that day, there's an argument, Beishamai says, Chulin, it has to be from unconsecrated, Beishillah says, Mina Meiser, which means partially it could be from Meiser. Why does the Mishnah specifically say that, that about the, 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 the Pesach offering? And the answer is, it, 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 we're talking about the Chagiga, and it applies to all holidays. Why does, it, why does the Mishnah specifically say Pesach one? And the answer is because it's excluding the Chagiga of the 14th day of Nisan. It's saying the Pesach, the first day of Pesach, but not the era of Pesach. That's why it's saying it. But the law really applies also to the other Erev Yamtav, the other uh, Yamtav uh, sacrifice called Chagiga. The, the same law applies. But what's excluded is the 14th day of Nisan, the Erev Pesach one, that was the unique sacrifice. And that law, uh, th that, that sacrifice would be allowed to be brought even completely from Meiser Shani, from your second type. Okay. Now, the uh, Gemara continued and said that we see that the 14th day is not biblical. And um, uh, uh, and that was uh, based on this idea that uh, you could bring it from, because you could bring it from Meister Shani. Anything that's an obligation, you can't bring from Meister Shani. Now, the Gemara then wants to say, okay, well, what about the 15th day? The, pay, the regular Pesach peace offering for the holiday. And the same thing would apply for Shavuos and Sukkot. What about that sacrifice? Base Hillel says you could bring it from Miser. Why could you bring that from Miser? That is an obligation. That's one of the uh, obligatory offerings is the Chagig. Again, we just concluded that the 14th day of Nisan is not 
a biblical obligation. Now, I should I should also mention that that's not necessarily the view of all opinions. There are opinions in the Gemara Psachim that say that the fourteenth day is an obligation biblically. There's one opinion says it has a certain rule that we learn it's eaten for two days and one night. Another one says you learn from the Torah that it's only eaten for one night, one day and one night. So there are sources in the Gemara Psachim that do argue with this and they claim the opinions there hold that it, it is biblical. But of course, there's an, another opinion which we, we see in our Gemara and that is that the 14th day Chagiga is a rabbinic uh, possibly rabbinic, possibly not even an obligation. Now, uh, the Gemara now says, so what does Beis Hillel mean when he says that this sacrifice could be brought from Miser? That seems to contradict everything that we know. Anything that's an obligation cannot be brought from Miser. And we might, we might say that the 14th day sacrifice is not an obligation. Okay. But what about the 15th? The 15th is an obligation. And it still, Beis Hillel says, that can be brought from Iser. That doesn't sound right. It's an obligation. The Gemara answers. Anyone know what the Gemara answers? How does Beis Hillel allow the 15th day sacrifice, the, the 15th of Nisan, the Pesach sacrifice? And the same thing would apply to Shavuos and Sukkot. Beis Hillel says it could be from Miser. How could that be? How can you bring from Miser? It's an obligation. So the Gemara answered a term called Teufel, Fela. It's Teufel. Ula says, you know what we're talking about? It's Teufel. Anyone know what that means, but Teufel? The Teufel means supplement. You could supplement your unconsecrated sacrifice of the holiday sacrifice with money that is consecrated, which would call it my Shani money. You could supplement the unconsecrated with the my Shani money. Now, it either means financially money, money, you're adding the money to each other and buying one big sacrifice with both monies, or it could mean that you're buying one animal totally unconsecrated with unconsecrated money. And the rest of the animals you could bring, you want to bring more sacrifices, you could bring more. But those sacrifices should be could, could be brought, the extras can be brought from Iser Shani money, but the first sacrifice has to be solely unconsecrated from unconsecrated funds. Now, one of the rabbis, one of the later commentaries wants to say that this argument, interestingly enough, leads us to a famous question from a, a, a great scholar of the Talmud that he wanted to know how does the Talmud see the difference between quality and quantity, both in regard to mitzvahs and regard to averas, sins? What do I mean? If you have an opportunity to do many small mitzvahs, you'll have quantity. Or is it better to do one big mitzvah, quality? Which one overrides the other? And the same thing would apply for sins. If you could, you need, you're in a situation where you need to sin. It's a life and death situation. For example, the doctor said on Yom Kippur, you need to eat meat. That's what the doctor said. You're in a very bad situation. Someone's in a bad health situation. The doctor said, it's a must. They have to have meat today. Otherwise, who knows? They might not make it. And you only have either non-kosher meat available 
Or you could slaughter the cow and have kosher meat. But slaughtering a cow on Yom Kippur is a very big sin. Eating non-kosher meat is a small sin. But when you eat the non-kosher meat, every bite is a sin. When you slaughter the cow, only the slaughtering is the sin. But afterwards, you don't sin every minute. You did one sin of slaughtering and goodbye. But eating the non-kosher meat, every bite is another sin. So you have quality versus quantity. Which one is worse? So he wants to say that that's connected to our Gemara, but I see Yehuda wants to tell us something. Yes, Yehuda. Well, I I, mean, I think we learned in, in, in Brachas that if you have a large sum of money to, to donate to Tzedakah, which is better, to do it all at once or to do a little every day? And the answer was to do a little bit every day. Right. Good point. Very good point. Well said, Yehuda. And um, uh, the uh, the thing the thing with that is that when it comes to um, when it comes to uh, tzedakah, there is we do find such a concept that doing uh, uh, the more acts you do, the greater it is. So that sounds like quantity is better than quality. On the other hand, it's not a it's not such a perfect proof. And the reason is because there's also a concept of getting a person accustomed to doing more good deeds physically. And because of that, when it comes to charity, there there definitely is such a concept of it's more important to do more in the smaller uh, uh, acts of kindness than doing one big one. Because the more you do, you're constantly acting, doing more good deeds. Right. Everything goes according to the um, the the, uh, the 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 um, um, the many actions, the abundance of actions. Lefiroiv So it doesn't say according to the the big action. It goes according to the abundance of action, which basically implies that there is a uh, great uh, element of, of doing more small good deeds. And, and people, you know, this is a famous question when it comes to giving charity. Should you give uh, uh, a lot of small donations to many causes or one big donation to one cause? Uh, that, that's sort of what you're, you're touching upon. Uh, you right, right. And, um, uh, but it does, it does, yes, yes, Isaac. Just one point. We don't know. I mean, we're measuring many this or many that and counting this. We don't know the value of a mitzvah in terms of how important in our own minds we imagine, oh, that's an important mitzvah and this one's not such an important mitzvah. But in the sense of things, we really don't know the value. And measuring it in dollars or time you know, we should just try to do our best by all of them. So the, the thing is that when it comes to certain Avedas, we can see from the punishment which one is considered a bigger, uh, you know, which one is bigger, which one is smaller, because if there's a Isser Skila, if there's a punishment yeah, yes. of, of stoning, that would mean that yes, it carries absolutely. with it a more strict uh, you Absolutely. Know. So that's Arbor sort of Nisa how they're. Fezin and the difference between Marcus and Nisa. Absolutely. Right. But so that's in sort terms of, how... of mitzvahs, you know, I don't know how important the estrig is compared to the Arabus. Right. Okay. Fine. Obviously, there are areas where we're not. We don't. We, we don't. We don't know how to compare the two. But this is. I'm not uh, just throwing this idea out. 
This is brought in in, in Hilcha Shabbos. This is uh, something that's yes, dealt yes, with absolutely. in the laws of Shabbos because it does have practical application. And um, yes, I'm uh, only it, saying generally when it comes to the mitzvahs, I think you have to be careful in evaluating them by our standards without knowing what it really is. Right. Okay, fine. Okay, true. There, that, that's a good point that, that you can't always, especially because it says in Perky Yavis, and you can't uh, calculate the uh, what's bigger and what's smaller. Right. Good, good, good point, uh, Isaac. Thank you for uh, emphasizing, bring that up. Okay, so the bottom line is, how is that connected to our Gemara here? The way that's connected to our Gemara here is that, that um, uh, our Gemara has this argument. And what is the argument? The argument is... Um, regarding uh, having this sacrifice that's bought from unconsecrated money and um, and then uh, uh, mixing with it consecrated Meister Shani money. So what's the way to do it? Well, one option is you mix the monies together and buy one big animal. One big animal, that means that every particle of that animal has a little Meister Shaney money in it, little second tithe money, and it has a little unconsecrated money in it, right? So whoever eats it is getting some unconsecrated, you know, Chagiga. He's getting some of this, this offering, this holiday offering, that's unconsecrated. He's getting a little that is that is by Sershani money, but some of it is not. The other way of mixing the my Sershani money with okay. the Maybe. what is that another? The other way of mixing the my Sershani money together with the unconsecrated money is by buying one animal that's completely unconsecrated. And then afterwards, you buy other animals that are completely my Shaney money animals. So the difference between these two ways of doing it could be looked at as the difference between quality and quantity. According to one opinion, buy one animal that's completely unconsecrated. It's all about quality. You need to have one solid animal that's 100% unconsecrated. And afterwards, you have your, your, your Meister Shaney animals, Chagiga, extra Chagigas, you know, Meister Shaney ones. But the one animal, you got the echos, you have the, you have the quality. The other way of doing it is mix it all together. It's all about, it's not about the, the quality, it's about the quantity. Every bite that you're eating has a little of the unconsecrated money in it. So mix the monies together, buy one big animal, and every piece that you eat has some element of unconsecrated chagiga, has some chagiga in it. So you could maybe connect these two ideas. It's not my thought. It's one of the later commentaries based on this, uh, 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 based on this philosophical question. You could connect it to our Gemara. Yes, uh, Yehuda. Yeah, I, I don't understand how you can use consecrated money to buy an unconsecrated animal. So consecrated money here means my Shaney money. That's right. meant for you. What is the purpose of that money? Well, it's see, it's a little. It's not such a perfect term. Consecrated. The the purpose of that my Shaney money is for you to eat and enjoy in Jerusalem. And okay. the common thing was to buy a sacrifice. Just, we're going a little overboard over here. We're saying, not only do you buy a sacrifice, buy the holiday sacrifice that you need to buy anyway, buy that with this Meister Shaney money. So that's where it's getting a little uh, sketchy, so to speak, because uh, you're, you're using funds that are meant to be used for 
you know, enjoyment and, and, and other, you know, uh, extras, bonuses, and you're using it for an obligatory thing. And that's what the Gemara is dealing with. Uh-huh. So what okay. we're saying is, so it's consecrated, but it's it's not consecrated to, to Hashem. It's consecrated for my Shani, for your own purposes. It's it, but it has it has a certain element of of holiness to it. True, right. but it's meant for you to enjoy. And the issue that we're dealing with is not the fact that it's consecrated and you shouldn't be enjoying it. it the fact it, the, the issue is that it's consecrated for my Shani, and you shouldn't be fulfilling an obligatory uh, sacrifice with this money. That's what we're dealing with. So the, the wording is not so perfect when we say consecrated. Thank but, you. Uh, yeah, so that, that's the issue here. So what we're we're coming up with a... Now, Beishamai doesn't agree with this whole thing. Beishamai says, you can't use any of that for this for this obligatory right. sacrifice. That's it. Don't you, not a penny. You got to buy your unconsecrated animal for your obligation. But Beis Hillel says... You could use my Shani, but not for the whole thing. You got you can supplement it with your Meister Shani money. Supplement the unconsecrated with the Meister Shani money. Now, this is not so simple. And this is where the Gemara has a debate how to fulfill that. You either fulfill it with uh you either fulfill it with buying one solid unconsecrated animal in the rest you buy Meiser Shani animals and you're fulfilling, you're doing Chagiga, calling them Chagigas, but the reason why you're able to do that is because you fulfilled the main obligation of Chagiga with one solid, completely, absolutely unconsecrated fund animal. On the other hand, the other opinion is that you mix the money from the Meiser Shani money, you mix it into your unconsecrated money and you take all that money together, you buy one big animal and that one big animal now is a mixture of unconsecrated funds and Meiser Shani funds. And it's, that's what that animal is. And that animal, you're going to fulfill your obligation of Chagiga with it. And what I've just explained is that there is a way to understand this as the fact is you're getting, it's, it's all about quantity versus quality. And you're getting the quantity there because every bite that you're eating, you're having some unconsecrated uh, uh, chagiga in it. And on the other hand, the other opinion holds that you need to have quality. You have to have that one solid animal that is completely uncon- from unconsecrated funds, and that would be the way to fulfill the obligation of Chagiga. And then the extras, okay, so you have Meister, you can use your Meister Shani money for, for your extra Chagigas that uh, you really, you really, ful- you know, you fulfilled your main obligation of. Rabbi. Yes, Moshe. It seems like it's Kashem, it's here with what I, uh, Rabbi Hillel is saying, as opposed to Shammai, it seems more, more clear. You would think that you would use the unconsecrated money for, uh, you know, for Meiser Shani, you know, that, I mean, you, you, you it, instead well, of the Hagiga. reverse, instead of the reverse, you know, for the Chagiga, you know what I'm saying? Instead of the reverse, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but Shammai, Shammai sounds easy. Shammai right? sounds much more, re, easy. more, Great. On, uh, Hillel sounds like it's Kashi Matia. You're going to mix the two together. And I mean, it, it, it's, it, the proportion could be totally, you know, you don't know what part of the, the behemoth is going to have the uh, have both. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's yeah, well, uh, every, every little <laughs> dot of that animal has a mixture in it. I see. So it's evenly distributed, in other words, uh, basically. But, the, the, for measure, yeah. but nevertheless, what you're saying is true that Beishtamai is a much is a easy is the easy way out but that's not what life is about yeah, <laughs> life isn't about what's the easy way out and it's very easy to be machmir. the trick of you know of of of, of the uh, halachic uh the, the real halacha the trick of it is koyach de hetera adif is to permit things to find reason why everything is permissible and this is permissible, and that's permissible. And the only way you can do that is if, you, if you're able to clarify 
libun hilchasa, to get the clarity of halacha, and you could say this is permissible, because it's very easy for, you know, to just say, you know what, I don't do it that way because I'm nervous about that issue, and I don't do this because I'm nervous maybe that's not kosher enough. And that The, the trick is not to do that. It's to know it so well that you say that's actually permissible. It looks maybe a problem, but it's not. That looks bad. uh, You have a question about it, but I looked into it and it's actually permissible. That's the real trick of of Torah is to to get such clarity that you're able to say this is permissible. I see. You know, and, and, and the reason Kabbalistically for that is because anything that's permissible, you're able to elevate. And so we want it to be as we want to find as many ways of making something permissible so we can actually elevate it to holiness. When you prohibit something, you actually say that it can't be elevated. The word usur literally means tied down. Utter literally means untied. And uh, the meaning behind that Kabbalistically is something that's prohibited, that's usur, is tied down that you can't elevate it. And something that's mutter is untied, and it's actually able to be elevated. The Kabbalistic terminology, it's called gimel klipas hatmeis, the three impure uh, uh, klipas shells, those are tied down, those you can't elevate. But the klipa revius, the the fourth shell, is called klipas noiga. It's called a shell that has light. And that concept, it means it's something permissible, that can be elevated. So that's the uh, Kabbalistic idea of, of, of permitting things, trying to find something to be permissible. And that's really where it, where, 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 where what people aren't aware of, and that, uh, that, that it's, you know, it takes much more to permit something than to prohibit something. Very easy to prohibit things, but it takes much more. It means you have such clarity that you can, or that you, you're able to permit something. Okay, so getting back, to uh, the Gemara that we were uh, learning. So we have these two opinions. And again, it, the names of the, these two views is Chizkiya and Rabbi Yechanan. And Chizkiya had said that you do the Behema uh, the Behema. You add animals to supplement the unconsecrated animal. And Rabbi Yechanan said, you supplement the money with more money of Meiser Shani money. And therefore, you would now uh, be able to buy one animal that has uh, unconsecrated money and Meiser Shani money in it. And that was These were the two opinions. And the Gemara brought brysas that seem to go along these lines of thinking, the, both of these lines of thinking. And so... Rabbi Yechanan and Chizkia were basically have sources sort of in the, these, these brises seem to be good, good sources for these two views. And the, the um, you know, not necessarily where the brise, you sort of have to explain the brisa to see where, where the proof is. Where do you, how do you see that the brisa is following these views? So let's say, let's pick, for example, the brisa that follows Rabbi Yechanan, that got, follows Rabbi Yechanan's line of thinking. So you're, th- 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 we're, we're, we're trying to find where it says in the Brisa that the money should be joined together with, you could join it with Meiser Shani money, and that would uh, allow you to, uh, to buy a Chagiga with both monies. Um, and, and have one animal with money from both. Where do you see that in the Brisa? So the Brisa bases itself on the word misas. Misas mem samachaf means a tribute, like a gift, a tribute. And the the concept of misas sounds, the Gemara says, that you're giving something chulen, from chulen, from unconsecrated funds. Right, if you're giving something, you're not giving it from consecrated money. Misas implies that it's from unconsecrated funds. Now, the Brisa says that if you want to mix, <coughs> you can mix. And he brings us Kasher Yevarechah Hashem as Hashem blesses you. 
with what, all that Hashem blesses you, you could, in other words, you could, you could use all that Hashem blesses you to buy this animal. What does that mean? That you could use my Sershani and unconsecrated funds. These are all, my Sershani is a blessing from God that you, you have produce and you have an abundant, you have a produce that you're able to give my Sershani. So these are all parts of the gift that Hashem gave you. He gave you unconsecrated funds and he gave you consecrated funds. In other words, from the, from the produce. And you're able to use both. So you see from there that you could mix. Now, when it says the term mixing, that is the proof. Because if it says mixing, mixing only works with money. If you mix the money together, you buy one big animal. But if you're buying one unconsecrated animal and a number of consecrated, in other words, my Sershani animals, if you're buying different animals, then you would not use the term mixed. And that's the source, that's the reason how we know that this Brysa seems to follow the thinking of the, the thinking uh, path of Rabbi Yechanan, the way Rabbi Yechanan is thinking, because it's implying from the fact that it uses the term mixing, that we're talking about mixing the money and buying one big animal that has a combination of unconsecrated funds that, that it's bought with and my Shaney funds that it's bought with. And therefore, every part and parcel of this animal that you eat, you're getting some unconsecrated. And you're also getting some consecrated, some my Shaney, but it's okay. But because you're getting some unconsecrated. And therefore, it's called a Chagiga, and that's kosher, and that's how based Hillel understands it. Now, the, uh, the next Brysa wants to prove Chizkiya. Chizkiya's view was that you, you buy one solid, unconsecrated animal, and then you could buy other animals that are Meister Shani animals. And you could use these as well for Chagigos. And this is on, we're now on page, where we are on page 8a. We're in the middle of the page. And we have a Brysa that we're proving, that we're showing Chizkiya's view. And we see it in a Bryser. This, of course, was in Amoira, was later on. But we see his, it, it seems that he's uh, basing it on this Bryser. Um, or his teachers taught it to him this way, but it seems to be connected, the same line of thinking as this Bryser. What does the Bryser say? So the Bryser says the same word, Misas. Misas means a tribute. It's a tribute as a gift to your hands, to uh, for the holiday. And uh, it teaches us that a person brings his obligatory uh, offering from unconsecrated funds, right? That's what Misas is. We, with the same thing we said earlier. Misas is a tribute. Tribute, you got to give from unconsecrated funds. You're not going to give a tribute from someone else's money. From or money that's met, you know that's that's for some some other purpose. So misas implies that it's unconsecrated funds, and Beishamai says that whatever you bring for your obligatory offering on the first day of the holiday, for it has to be from the chulin, from the unconsecrated funds. Now, what you bring afterwards, uh, after you fulfill your obligation of the uh, first day. That's just for joy, just for to be to rejoice. That you could use uh, miser. You could use other non, uh, uh, not, you know, non unconsecrated uh, funds. You could use miser shani for that as well, because here it's just about having eating the meat for joy. It's not fulfilling your obligation of bringing a sacrifice. It has a. It, it's like a, a means to fulfill having the joy. It's not an not an ob obligation to bring us the sacrifice. And therefore, what's, what happens after the first day is all just, a, you're just, a, uh, you, you know, getting joy. It's all about getting joy. That you could, you could get the joy from bringing your Meiser Shani, uh, bringing sacrifices of Meiser, with Meiser Shani money, as long as you are able to get joy from a sacrifice from the meat. Now, let me mute everyone here. 
That's Beis Shammai's view. This is this This is still the Bryce. Now Beis Hillel, and this is what we're trying to find: is where do, do we see that you buy one animal that's unconsecrated, and the rest of the animals could be Meiser Shani animals? So what does Beis Hillel say? He says that we just said that misas means you're supposed to bring a tribute from unconsecrated funds. So he says, you know what that means? That the first achila rishayna, it means that your your first uh, eating should be from unconsecrated, which we're translating to mean the first animal would be totally unconsecrated. And after that, any other animals that you bring which we're understanding to mean chagigas, that would be mina meiser. That could be from the meiser sheni money. So, which means that it sounds like he's saying you bring one animal solid from chulin, from unconsecrated, and the other animals, okay, they're, they're meiser sheni animals. We're calling them chagigas, but they're meiser sheni, that's okay. And the source of that would be that same verse, Kasher Yivarechacha, as whatever Hashem bless you. You know, as long as you ate that, you have that first solid, that first um, eating, which was the first animal, was a uh, complete um, uh, chulin, a complete unconsecrated. Then afterwards, you could bring from the uh, from the Meiser Shane ones. Rabbi? So, it sounds very clearly that it's talking about different animals here. That, that's definitely how it seems. Yes, uh, Moshe. Is there a difference between the unconsecrated um, behemoths and the Meister Shani uh, behemoths? I mean, in terms of uh, size or whether they have mom, um, a mom, or I mean, what is the difference between the two? Or they can both be the same. It's just... It's just based on unconsecrated and Meister Shani. Yeah, I mean, there might be slight certain rules about Meister Shani. Meister Shani does have certain rules about it. Uh, like, you know, an Oinen can't have Meister Shani, and maybe that doesn't apply to a, to a Chagig, a regular Chagig. So it might have certain, it might have one or two extra, you know, rules or something, but it, it doesn't have any, it doesn't play a major role. I mean, um, uh, what, what other law would apply? Yeah, I, I don't know that that it has too much look, you know, to what else would it would apply to it. Yeah, I guess, I guess that law might 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 make it slightly it might add a certain rule to it. You know, you might have to add a certain might 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 have certain additional rules, one or two rules, not not you know, not 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 too many. I don't I don't think it has too many uh applicable rules, but uh one of them that I, that comes to mind would be eating it as an oinen, if a person's relative passed away, so they, uh, they're they called an oinen that first day. And uh, you don't eat, the, that person is not allowed to eat any mice or shani that day. I see. Thank you. So, um, but then again, I don't know if they would be obligated in a sacrifice that day. If they're an oinen, they're putter, they're putter from mitzvahs. But, but unless maybe if, well, yeah, I, yeah. So I don't know if even that law would apply. I, I'd have to look it up because um, if other people are taking care of their relatives, then they become maybe they would be obligated in mitzvahs. But then maybe they're not called an einan. So I, I'd have to look up. It could be that even that even that there's not a difference. So uh, I'd have to look it up and double check. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we are, um, where are we over here? Rabbi? Yes, uh, Ezra, yes. Um, in terms of the last question, whether an onen, uh, whether a relative taking care of is an onen, I don't think that that's necessarily the case. We uh -huh. have someone who's going to be buried today, I and... The husband, who used uh, husband and wife, who, were, from what I understand, were taking care of the wife's uh, father, 
and um, he came today, davened in, in a regular minion, like everybody else. So you're, you're, you're telling me that there's a funeral today, and the relative, who's a child, I guess, the, the child is uh, davened regularly? No, even it's though not a child, it's a, it's a son-in-law. Son in law, but that's not that he wouldn't have the law of I mean, it would be, but you're his saying wife. that if it was, yeah, it would, uh, the, the law would apply to only if it's uh, that that person's direct relative, not his, not an in law. But uh, I'm not 100% sure, so I, 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 the truth is, I have to look it up. It's not, you know, and I'm, it's, uh, uh, it's not clear to me what the, uh, what the rules of Oinen are. Uh, so, I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, don't quote me on it. I mean, okay. If it was a direct, if it was a direct relative, I agree with you, hundred percent. You can't do anything. Right. So, th- because of that, so I'm trying to compare the law of if the chagiga offering is bought with my Sershani money, would that have any different law than if a chagiga offering was bought? With non Meister Shaney money, would would there be any new laws that apply to it? That's what I'm just trying to figure out, and I'm not sure the law of Einan. Once they give the body to the Chevra Kadisha, and once does does that mean that the person's not an Einan anymore? And if that's so, would they be allowed Meister Shaney? So I, I I'd have to see what what it says. Uh, doesn't doesn't the body have to be buried in order for your Einanu to stop? See, that's what I'm not sure. That's what I have to look up because maybe once it's given over to the um, people who are taking charge, maybe then it doesn't. Maybe then it, it stops. Then so I, I, I might be wrong. I have to, you know, it's not. Uh, no, I, I halakha that, that I learn that I learn regularly. Um, okay, so uh, in any event, getting back to our Gemara, uh, the. Um, the Gemara then says another law that what about the other days? And it mentions the other days of Pesach. So you're bringing sacrifices. This according to, uh, this uh, seems to be following the statement that we just said about Beis Hillel, but maybe it's going back on everyone. Seemingly it would, uh, what did the, how did the Brisa start? Started with Beishamai says be a rishon from Chulin. Mikan va'elach, Mikan va'elach. What Beishamai was saying was the rest of the days uh, that would be simcha you could bring from Meiser. So it would seem that this statement to Shar Kol Pesach is a continuation of of Beis Hillel. Yeah. Okay. So the the brisa continues with Beis Hillel statement. And says that what about the rest of the days? So we spoke about the first day of the holiday. We're specifically speaking about Pesach here. And we said the first day of the holiday, you would bring one animal that's unconsecrated and the rest could be Meiser Shani animals. But the rest of Pesach, which now you no longer need to bring a Chagiga because you already fulfilled your obligation on the first day. So now when it says the rest of Pesach, what we're talking about is the, uh, the mitzvah of Simcha, that you could be yoytze, your obligation with Meiser behemoths. You don't even need, not only, of course, can you fulfill your mitzvah with Meiser, Meiser Shani, you could even fulfill your obligation with uh, Meiser behema, with uh, bringing a animal that, that is, um, uh, the tithing animal, which basically means uh, if your animals gave birth uh, this year to 20 animals, so you would bring, you would uh, put those animals in a small pen and put them through a, a, a gate to have them each go through and you count each one, one, two, three, and the 10th one, you would uh, mark it with red ink, red dye, and that would be the number 10th, that would be the 10th animal and that would be called the Meiser Behema. And again, we, we read about that on in the davening every day. Meiser, Chorva, Meiser, Var Pesach, Kachim Kalim, Shechitasim, Chol Magam Azorov, and we say that HaMeiser Nechol, HaBuchar Nechol, Kainam, Meiser Lechol Adam, Meiser is eaten by any individual. 
So the person brings that animal, the mice or behema, and uh, brings it to as a sacrifice. And that sacrifice could be used to fulfill the obligation of Simcha of Joy. So the Gemara says that the Gemara implies uh, from this Brisa, the Gemara understands from this Brisa, that you can't bring a mice or behema on Yom Tov. You could bring it on Chol HaMoyim. On the intermediate days of the holiday, you could bring that animal as a, as a uh, sacrifice. But you don't bring such a sacrifice on Yom Tov. Now, of course, we bring certain sacrifices on Yom Tov that are obligatory for Yom Tov, that are applicable for Yom Tov. Oh, Elas Re'iyah, Karban Chagiga, uh, we bring the Tamid, we bring the Musaf, we bring the, the applicable sacrifices that are uh, applicable for the holiday. But we would not bring a Meiser Behema animal for Yom Tov. And the Gemara is wondering why. Why wouldn't you bring a Meiser Behema animal for Yom Tov? It's, you're allowed to slaughter on Yom Tov. It's not Shabbos. You're allowed to slaughter an animal on Yom Tov. And so what's wrong with bringing a Meiser Behema animal on Yom Tov? So beyond time, the Gemara says, why can't you bring it? In fact, let's let's read this inside. Uh, we are holding, we're on page 8A, and we're on the last word on the line, beyond, beyond, the word is beyond, and um, it's about 12 lines up from the bottom of the page. So again, 8A, about 12 lines up from the bottom of the page. The last word on the line, B'yoyim. B'yoyim toiv my time aloy. On Yom Tov, why can't you bring my sir behem? Because that's what it implied. It implied that you wouldn't be allowed to bring my sir behema on the actual day of Yom Tov. You could only bring a my sir behema animal on the Cholamayim. Now, uh, the Gemara is asking a little deeper than this. The Gemara is asking that why can't you um, uh, not only bring a Meiser Behema on Yom Tov, it's really asking why can't you use the, bring the Meiser Behema um, uh, as, Um, additional sacrifices like you were bringing earlier uh, you were bringing one sacrifice that's uh, considered unconsecrated and the rest you're going to bring from Meiser Shane so bring also Meiser Behema Meiser Behema as well and the Gemara answers that we have a problem. Amar Ravashi, Ravashi says, you can't bring my Behem. Dilma Asi La Suri Biyantiv. That we're afraid that you might end up taking the Miser from the from scratch, doing the, the, the tithing. In other words, putting the animals into the pen and putting them through a gate and counting them and doing the miser. And what's going to happen? You're going to mark the 10th animal with the red ink, with the red uh, dye. Dil Masi Lasur Biyamtiv, we're going to do the tithing on Yamtiv. E after Laasur Biyamtiv, Mishum Sikarto. And you're not allowed to uh, tithe on Yamtiv because of. You're the mark that you're going to make, which is called sikra. Sikra, the, the term sikarta here is the sikra, the, uh, the red ink. And so therefore, it would be prohibited to do that on Yom Tov. Taisus, interestingly, has a question. He says, that the only problem is the red ink. What about being maktish, an animal on Yom Tov? What about saying this animal is going to be a hegdish? On Yom Tov. Are you allowed to do that? He says you're not allowed to. Ain makdish and be Yom Tov. 
you can't be makdish an animal on Yom Tov and say this animal is, is hegdish, is holy. By you saying this is the 10th animal, you're also being magdish the animal. So that would seemingly be a problem, not only an issue of making a mark on the animal, you also have an issue of you are sanctifying, consecrating an animal on Yom Tov. And Taisa says, you know what? It's not a problem. Because it's Kedusha the Oymedes. Since you're obligated biblically to make it holy, it has that Kedusha already. You're not really sanctifying it. What it seems like Taisvis is saying is when that animal goes through the gate, that tenth animal becomes holy. Whether you say it's holy, the tenth animal or not, whether you paint it or not, that animal is automatically holy, and you are not the one who's making it holy. You would not be able to consecrate an animal on Yom, but this animal automatically is consecrated because it happens to go through the tenth as the tenth. The tenth animal is automatically consecrated, and therefore, the issue here is not that you're being makdish it, that you're consecrating the animal on Yom. The issue here is that you're paint that you might end up painting it red and that would be the that would be a problem on Yom Tov, and therefore we don't want you to bring a tithing and uh, the, the, the tithing animal on Yom Tov, because you might end up doing the tithing on Yom Tov, and that would be a problem and therefore the Gemara ends off that um, that that's the uh, that's the reason why it only mentions Shar Kol Yemei HaPesach and not Yom Tov. That only on the other days, but not on the actual day of Yom Tov. And, um, and I guess we'll stop here.